All right, welcome back to the Jira and Nuzzy podcast, welcome everybody. Back again. Video show number four, I think episode ten total. Thank you guys all for the support uh, in the past. We can't thank you guys enough, as we say every time. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you're liking the Facebook page uh, at Jira, or excuse me, Jira Nuzzy podcast uh, Facebook page at Jira Nuzzy on Twitter, and the YouTube page is also Jira Nuzzy podcast. Make sure you're clicking subscribe. And the uh, YouTube page is really blowing up a little bit. Yeah. Over 40 subscribers, That's pretty cool. Over yeah, 100 views. We doubled our views on YouTube. Yes, and then the Facebook Facebook views, views go without saying. Are, can't again, can't you yeah. know that's. Pretty awesome. Never thought I'd have a video that would have 500 views, much less a thousand. So, yeah. you know, as we, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, we can announce some stuff we got coming up uh, in the future. Uh, we are gonna do a live show at our place of employment, Outback Steakhouse, on draft day, which is Saturday. Uh, excuse me, Thursday, April 25th. And uh, we're going to do it in the morning, the morning before round one of the draft. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be Facebook Live. We're going to take your questions. We're going to take, uh, you know, uh, live questions. If you want to hang out with us that day, make sure yeah. you, know, you come down, hang out with we're us. We're going to have some free food. Some we're going to do our yeah. pro give away some prize. We're going to do the $50 gift card yes, uh, uh, giveaway. Yeah. Uh, we'll have some food for everybody. Uh, no rules, just right. That's Outback right. Steakhouse. We yeah. want to thank Mike for uh, giving us that opportunity for Absolutely. Uh, putting that together for us. And it's going to, it's going to, be some fun. We're gonna talk some draft, uh, eat some good food, and it's always uh, fun going live. You questions. know, you never know what's gonna happen oh, live. Yeah. You know, might have some special guests. Yeah, who knows? Know. We'll get some questions in. If you come out and you want to get on air, you know, we might put you on air. You yeah. know, if, if you know what you're talking about. I mean, we don't. You know, mm -hmm. and you guys still listen, but no, nah, just kidding. But uh, yeah, we can't wait for that. Uh, hopefully, we can do some more stuff like that in the future. Uh, maybe that'll get us going with that. Um, so yeah, we, we got that going. Uh, a lot of stuff in the news. Uh, we had you know the Antonio Brown stuff still going. We got some trades that went down since the last show. Jason Witten came out of retirement yeah. since the last show. Things are heating up. That new league year starts March 13th. It's and very uh, close. Things are really starting to buzz. The biggest thing Five is... Five days away. Last night, Antonio Brown almost became a Buffalo Bill. I guess depending on who you talk to or who you believe. But uh, supposedly the Steelers... Had a, a deal in place with the Bills. Yeah, and if you're anything, if you're anything like me, you slept through the whole thing because, uh, I know, last night went bed early, woke up a little bit, and saw that he was all but that was all but a done deal. And then you wake up this I wake up this morning and it was dead. So I slept through the entire Antonio Brown Buffalo Bills era. Yeah, which was pretty crazy. Uh, you know, we'll touch on Antonio Brown right now. I mean, we're looking at from when he couple weeks ago announced the trade or was going to happen him and the owner said it was for the best you had all these teams supposedly interested they wanted a first round pick for the guy or maybe an early second and every week or every day it seems like that value just keeps dropping because teams keep dropping out. well and, and he's not helping himself with uh doing all this stuff uh you all know, the interviews all the interviews all the talking all the social media stuff and i think what's going on right now I, I think there, he's getting a little of a, a harsh reality that the interest for him is really not what maybe he thought it would be when you factor in his twenty plus million dollar year salary. Right. In fact, he's you know thirty years old, gonna be thirty one before the season starts, and some of the baggage that he has, there's really not that big of a market for him. So it's kind of uh, slim pickings right now. And at this point, I wouldn't even be, be all that shocked if. Uh, Antonio Brown ends up going back to Pittsburgh. And he made he might, that. He, he made might that just kind of sit back and look and say, you know what, geez, the grass isn't always greener. No, it's not. It's the not. situation in Pittsburgh maybe really isn't that bad, especially uh, when you you know you talk about him possibly being a Buffalo Bill. Oof. You know, he's, he's might sit back and say, hey, you know, I got a Super Bowl quarterback and a pretty good organization. Maybe I want to stick around here for the next couple of years. Yeah, and you made that point uh, earlier today and last night actually, and you said, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back. And my first thought was well the you know the, he's basically you know made his bed in Pittsburgh he wants out he, he him and Ben Roethlisberger clearly don't get along now they haven't gotten along apparently for years but now it's all out there and uh but like you said I mean you were about to go to Buffalo with Josh Allen imagine you know he got mad at Ben Roethlisberger in situations I mean you can't even imagine what it would happen with Josh Allen who's a developing quarterback sure. you know he's not the worst quarterback in the league but he's no Ben Roethlisberger no, so no, absolutely. I mean if but I, I I do ultimately think that the the Steelers will get a trade done and I think we're both in consensus that Oakland is the only one left really that makes any sense they have the draft picks they have the cap room they have the need for a, a, a wide receiver like him so I think it makes it makes a ton of sense so uh much as know. it kills me to say that Oakland makes sense for anything, but, but I mean, but you got all those teams dropping out, like we talked about. You know, we thought you know maybe Arizona, maybe Tampa Bay. Um, those teams are all out. Washington's yeah. out, so there's really not a lot of teams left 
in the Jets for Antonio count. Brown. So maybe the one secret team, maybe Green Bay. I know I saw something like you know Green Bay might try and make it work. It's always from the financial uh, spot with Green Bay. But guys, we know Green Bay has paid Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. They don't really pay many people yeah. in Green Bay. So that's gonna be the only and they team. They got a young head coach, a young rookie head coach. I don't right. know if they want a personality like Antonio Brown coming in and kind of maybe disrupting things. You know, it could be a tough guy to handle. So. I just don't know if that would work. And we were talking the other day about top flight receivers. And, you know, even when Odell Beckham's name was thrown out for trade, that, like, the market wasn't very big. Or now Antonio Brown, we see people dragging their feet. And it's like, why is that? And I I was thinking about it. And if you look at the last – if you got to go all the way back to maybe the early 90s, mid-90s, where the Michael Irvins of the world and Jerry Rice with the Niners – that Super Bowl winning teams usually don't have the top five receiver on no. their team. You look at the Patriots all these years, the Broncos a couple years ago, the Ravens won a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. the Seahawks, the Bucks early in 2000s. None of these teams had top flight receivers. And I don't know if that's maybe catching up with GMs and they're thinking, well, wait a minute, if we want to build a Super Bowl roster, which is everybody's you know end goal to every season, do we really need this distraction? You know, is it is the does the distractions outweigh the production sure. when it comes to winning? And I, I think it actually does. I think that's where we're at right yeah, now. Yeah, because what's happening is a lot of these, you know, uh, big time receivers have become divas and obviously yep. uh, big distractions in the locker rooms and then these teams don't have the, you know, patience for it, then you see these organizations that uh, continue to win like New England, Baltimore. Yep. Uh, they really haven't had that number one star-studded receiver. I mean, no, teams, New England didn't have Randy Moss for that. Stretch. But they lost. They lost but the Super Bowl. They, they, they didn't they, win they it. They didn't get one one with Randy Moss. <laughs> and yeah. and you look at Atlanta a couple years ago had Julio Jones. I mean, he got completely shut down in that mm-hmm. Super Bowl. I mean, I'm not saying that you have a top five receiver. You're never going to win a Super Bowl. That's not what I'm saying. But if you but look, you at, don't necessarily need one. You don't necessarily need one to win one. That's cl- that's clear. And uh, I think maybe 2000. The Rams when they when they had Tory Holt and Isaac Bruce like maybe one of those guys were in the top five but mm-hmm. but even so that's one of the last what twenty some Super Bowls so right. that's something you got to think about something I, I noticed a couple of days ago I mean we could sit here and uh, we can talk about Antonio Brown all day there's some other stuff in the news uh, a slight Bronco hit I guess you could say Case Keenum moving uh, moving on to uh, Washington for a uh, for a sixth round pick Denver's actually sending a seventh with him I mean crazy to think uh, not even a year ago to the day he was signing on the dotted line to be the Broncos. Uh, next quarterback and John Elway thinking that he could be the guy that could, you know, get him back to the promised land. That clearly didn't happen last year. Mm-hmm. They made the trade for Flacco uh, a couple weeks ago, or at least they have a, a trade in place. It's not official till the new new league year. But if you're Washington, man, you go from having Alex Smith, uh, you know, you think Alex Smith, very, very competent quarterback. He's not, he has obviously doesn't have a Super Bowl ring, but he's, you know, definitely in the top, you know, 10, 10 to 15 quarterbacks in the league. So, I mean, and it's obviously a devastating hit for them. Now they got to trade for Case Keenum to be a placeholder. He might even be – you can see Washington maybe looking in the draft for a quarterback yeah, still. Yeah, I think so. Because Alex Smith looks more likely than not that he might not even play again. No, I don't think I, – I think Alex Smith is done. I don't think he's going to take another NFL snap no. ever again. And Case Keenum's just kind of a stopgap uh, kind of band-aid until right. they find their quarterback yeah. of the future. I think they're definitely probably going to be taking a quarterback – early in the draft, whether it be the first or second round. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, obviously, we have a, a trade that happened right before we started recording today. Right. Uh, the Giants and Browns made a pretty decent trade. Very interesting trade, yeah. for sure. Uh, Olivier Vernon uh, leaving the New York Giants, heading to Cleveland uh, for Kevin Zeeler, who's been an all-pro... Uh, of a guard. Pro Bowl Young guard. Uh, guard. I mean, and my theory is, I know we talked about it a little bit before the show started, is maybe, you know, with their mindset being, okay, Eli's got one more year, they want it. Looks all signs point to them drafting Dwayne Haskins. Might be the most obvious first round pick. Sure. Is Dwayne Haskins going to the Giants? You got to protect the young guy. Yeah. I mean, their offensive lineup has been abysmal the last Trocious, couple of years. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want him to develop right or at least get some confidence, you got to give him some protection because obviously he's and showed in the combine he's not exactly quick mm-hmm. uh, or fast, you yeah. know, with that uh, suspect 40 time. But as we know, that's not all, you know, speed doesn't really. Right, come down to just your forty time. I mean, quickness in the pocket, stuff like that. But you got to do protect your definitely got to protect them. That's a uh, definitely a good move uh, in the right direction for the Giants getting a quality guard like Zeigler. And you got you got to remember, uh, last year, you know, they lost a couple of their offensive linemen. They lost Justin Pugh, then they lost um, uh, Weston Richburg, mm. their center, center to the Forty yeah. ers So uh, they're getting some guys back now uh, to beef up that all line. And we stay in the NFC East just to touch on it a little bit. Like we said, Jason Witten uh, coming out of retirement. Uh, we know we got a lot of Cowboy fans that watch us, a lot of friends that are Cowboy fans. They're obviously amped about it. Uh, 
you know, Jason Witten showed even in his last year before he retired the first time, I guess we should say, he still was getting open. And even though he probably talked about 40 times, probably runs a 40 and seven flat for these mm -hmm. days. But man, he's, he's still a guy that can get open. I mean, he stayed in shape over the off season. Uh, he is up there in age. It's, but he, it's, run, he runs great routes. He does. He's a big body. He's yes. got great hands. So he's always going to be productive because he can run routes in his sleep. And mm -hmm. he'll definitely uh, be a welcome addition back going to the Cowboys. And with his leadership, too, I think Dak Prescott's got to be probably the happiest guy in that. Uh, Absolutely. Him and, right him and Amari Cooper. I mean, Amari Cooper is going to get all the attention. Obviously, he's their all-pro receiver, the guy that you know was the biggest trade of the, of the last couple of years probably that we've seen. To have an immediate impact with a team like he did, um, you know, Jason Witten's not somebody you can just ignore. I mean, even if he, yes, he is coming out of the Monday Night Football booth, but he's still somebody oh, yeah. that I think he wouldn't have come back if he didn't think he had a little left, and the Cowboys sure. wouldn't have brought him back no. if they didn't think they had a little no, left. As much as Jerry Jones, out. you know, does some questionable things, but uh, probably the most the thing we've been. Real anxious, of course, is out. You know, my man's specialty over here is the NFL draft. NFL I mean, draft. I, I love the NFL draft. The draft and, buzz and is here. The buzz and Kyler Murray is just—he's on top of everyone's mock draft now. Everybody's. He went from when he was thinking about you know leaving the baseball career right. behind, going into football uh, uh, fully. Said okay, maybe late first round. I know you you said no, no top ten. I said mm -hmm. ah, maybe. I don't think so though. Now looks like he's going to be the number one overall pick. I never I thought mean, that what, was going to happen. What a story! What a uh, uh, series of uh, you know things that have happened Crazy. the last couple of weeks. Uh, God, he went from you know is looking like a future baseball player to yeah. now being the number. I mean, one he was a top. Pick. He was a top ten baseball draft. draft. Like he was a draft. He was drafted in the and, top ten. And in how baseball. about this? Uh, you'd have back to back years where Oklahoma quarterback goes number one overall. Heisman that's Trophy winners and number one overall. I don't, I don't know if that's, that's ever. ever happened. That has never There's happened no before. Way. I would probably uh, you know state a little reputation on that, saying that's never happened. Two Heisman <laughs> Trophy quarterbacks from the same school going number one, one overall. Back to back and, years. I mean, it looks like it's gonna ha if. We would be shocked at this point if it doesn't happen. In a week's time, we've gone from, oh, I'd be shocked if he's in the top ten to he'd I don't think there's to, any way he's not top pick. He'd have to, something crazy would have to happen. He'd have to bomb his workout and have an off-the-field incident yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. you know. And this is coming for he didn't even do anything at the combine except no. except weigh himself and get his height well, and his hands. It goes back to Cliff Kingsbury, uh, you know, comes from that coaching tree, Lincoln Riley. Of course, it started with Mike Leach. It's that same coaching tree, and obviously, you know, Murray played there, and I, I, I think he just fell in love with him. He's yeah. the guy that he wants. They're not sold on Josh Rosen, Clearly. obviously, they're as taking, quarterback. And they're, and they're taking uh, offers for him. As, and and right then, now. too, I, I think we both agree that Russell Wilson, you know, has really helped the guy like Murray, showing that these shorter quarterbacks paved the way can sure. succeed, even Baker Mayfield. Now Baker Mayfield, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you look at uh, – see, to me – Height after ba after Russell Wilson. If you go even further back, maybe Drew Brees, who's not you know he's six foot, but uh, height shouldn't be an issue anymore at the quarterback position unless he's like five foot five or something like that. But if you're five eight, five nine, now he measured at five ten. There's been rumblings that that was a fake height or whatever. But you know people got to always throw some stuff out sure. like that. I mean Baker Mayfield proved it. Russell Wilson proves it. And then Drew Brees. So, I mean, that's not something that I think the Cardinals are even worried about one bit. Obviously, and you say Kingsbury has been er, very high on him. So, um, we are want we do want to go over our, uh, yeah. our our mock here. Obviously, like we said, Let's we get to it. Uh, our post our post uh, combine mock. Obviously, it's shaken up a lot. Um, you know, with the Kyler Murray, uh, you know, being the top guy now, he's on both of our we're consensus on that. I feel like, like we said, it'd be shocked if it wasn't. Uh, we go to your team now with the 49ers. I think we're both in consensus that that he just, Nick Bosa just falls right into their lap. I mean, you got to think the 49ers are just absolutely thrilled with all this stuff going on with Kyler Murray, getting the guy that they would have drafted number one if they mm -hmm. had the number one overall pick. Their biggest need is an edge rusher. They need an edge rusher badly. Cassis Marsh led them in sacks off the edge last year, and he's a backup at best. Mm -hmm. they got a glaring hole. You get Nick Bosa, pure edge rusher he's a guy who can dip get underneath the tackles he's got the power to run through tackles he can also get around them he's a guy who can come right in he's going to get 10 to 12 sacks as a rookie he's got the nfl body the nfl hands the nfl bloodlines just a perfect fit and uh they have a 4-3 defense very similar to seattle's where they have that leo defensive end who's kind right. of a hybrid dn linebacker 
and Bosa just fits that position. And Bosa's been team. the guy. Oh. Bosa's been the guy you've looked at from the start, saying he's the number one guy. He's the number one prospect. He, we we differentiate I, on I, that I a don't little bit. I necessarily think he, he he might not be the best player in the draft. We'll get to the next guy who I think is probably the best player in the draft. But Bosa, mm -hmm. I do think is the best edge rusher in a best loaded fit. edge rusher draft, and he's certainly the best fit for the 49ers. I I think they they they're going to be thrilled to death if he's there at number two. That would they're be exciting for you guys. Make Absolutely. That pick. And then uh, we move on to number three. Again, another consensus pick that we're all in, and I think everybody else is. That the Jets is, uh, hasn't, hasn't changed since the start. Is that D lineman out of Alabama, Quinn, Quinn Williams? Williams. Who I, mean, I think is probably the best player in the draft. He's tremendous. I mean, you talk about a 6'4, uh, about a 300 pound defensive tackle, cat quick, very guy quick. runs like a DM, mm -hmm. powerful hands. Watch. Watch the highlights of him on YouTube. He's getting double team. He's moving two guys back into backfield all times. Yep. Nine sacks from that DT position. And they even took him out on third down a lot. And he still managed to get nine sacks. Aaron Donald's a great player. I, I, I don't loosely compare guys to Aaron Donald because he's amazing. He's, he's terrific. Quentin Williams. But like you said, I think it's gonna be like you said, when you look at the film Donald. or you look at the highlights, he's doing Aaron Donald things. He's moving two guys. He's attacking double teams like they're nothing, flicking guys off them. Guys go backwards when and, they're going against and, Quentin Williams. And in the SEC, way. facing the top exactly. guys, being double team, still putting up the production. Right. Also, great character guy. Oh, I mean, yes. the Jets yes. at three, they get him. That's uh, a big move that's, for them. That's, that's huge. Yeah, and they're not, I don't see them wavering even with uh, if with the Kyler Murray. Uh, you know, news of him probably going number one. It does drop Josh Allen a little bit, who we're talking about next, who I think we're both, in, again, in consensus of that Josh Allen kind of just falls into Oakland's lap. Now, this is all assuming no trades go down. We can't we can't forecast trades. I mean, nobody can. Those happen within 15 seconds, 15 minutes of the picks. So uh, Josh Allen, like, falling to the Raiders. I mean, if they get their edge rush guy, yeah, replace Khalil Mack. I'll tell you, Josh Allen, I mean, you talk about him in the mix for the number one pick. That's how good he is, yeah. too. So you mm -hmm. get him at four. Uh, that would be great for the Raiders as well. You get a guy who could play DN or he could play outside linebacker. He's very versatile. He can drop back in pass coverage. Tremendous pass rusher we saw this year mm -hmm. at Kentucky. Come back for a senior season. Three sacks in the bowl game against Penn State where they beat Penn State. Really kind of put Kentucky football on the map Back this on the year. map for sure. And um, just tremendous player. Great character guy too. I mean, coming out of high school, he didn't had three scholarship offers. No one really wanted him, mm -hmm. and goes to Kentucky and just uh, rewrote the the record books there for for sacks. And great player, versatile guy, great character. Love Josh Allen. Three guys we just mentioned: Bosa, love. Williams, and Al Allen. Could all we could all see going number one, one. If, if the love any affair other, for Kyler yeah. Murray wasn't there. Yeah, we could all any see. other draft too. They yeah. could go number one. Yeah. Three tremendous, tremendous Absolutely. prospects. Absolutely. All high character guys. Too. Definitely well, all could be in the number one. On yeah, well, well, that's another story. The character issues. But, but let's go to so TM, now. Uh, this is finally where we differentiate a little bit. Uh, a little my bit. mock 1.0 uh, is the same as my 2.0 here, and I I do think when it comes down to it, the Bucks are going to address that need. That they need a corner. They need an athletic corner. And they need a guy that's going to make plays for them and be a ball hawk, so to speak, a playmaker in the defense. And I I still have them going Greedy Williams, corner at LSU. Uh, I know you differentiate. And you think uh, another uh, edge rusher is going to be going? Yeah, going well, five. I think this is where two the phone calls start taking place, if not sooner, yes. for the uh, Giants moving up for mm -hmm. Haskins. I, I don't think Tampa's going to keep this pick. I think Tampa I think trades. We both down. Yeah, on I think that. this yeah. might be where the trades kind of start. Mm -hmm. But if they do stay put, I'm going to have them taking Montez Sweat, the defensive end from Mississippi Shooting State. Shooting up the rankings. I'll tell you what, guy who uh, you know, there's always a guy who who just kills it. Um, Post postseason with the workouts with with the bowl game, I tell you he goes to the Senior Bowl, has a great week in practices, has a great game, goes to the combine, has the fastest Tears forty time ever for yeah. a, a defensive end, um, and this is a guy who's just not a workout warrior. He, no. In the SEC, Mississippi State he had double digit sacks. I mean he he he's a heck of a player. He's just not a workout warrior. You get him at five, uh, defensive end. Um, Great pick for definitely for, can uh, see that happening uh, for sure. Heard comparisons to Aldon Smith, mm -hmm. great yeah. Montez Sweat. Hopefully he's not the Aldon Smith well, off, off the, the field, field but no. uh, well, that goes without yeah. saying. But I mean, he's another guy Sweat that's just like if you look at Bosa, Allen, and Sweat, it's like do you have a three sided coin Jeez. you can flip? I mean, it's and and we were thinking Bosa, Allen, Bosa, Allen, Bosa, Allen, but now Sweat is just he's got the look. He said he's not a workout wearer, but the fastest time ever for a DN red rusher guy. I mean, 
Again, any other year, Sweat could be the best defense yeah, in I mean, the this draft. Is, it's just such a This is a very draft. under... Uh, we said, we, we've talked highly about this draft constantly, and so has other people, but to the casual fan, this is an underrated draft. It's a, it's it a, really it's is. not a sexy draft. No. It's a meat and potatoes draft. Yep. This is where you get your edge rushes, you get your DTs, your offensive tackles and linebackers. But this is, if you're an NFL fan, if you're a football fan, you got to love this because... The, 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 these, this, the, you know, the, these are the kind of guys you build your team. Yeah. You build your, you know, you, you always say you build your team in the trenches, and there's some great guys. We say it always. The biggest thing, you gotta get to the quarterback. If you can't get to the quarterback, you can't win. Period. You can't. You can't win. Um, unless you're the Patriot. Um, but let's go to number six and the Giants. Dwayne Haskins goes without saying. We've been in consensus on that forever. And I think we probably think they'll They're probably gonna move, move up, up for more than likely. But, but you know, we don't. Yep. We've spent some time on Haskins already. You know, with the trade for uh, for Zietler getting him and yep. uh, all that stuff, and they want to protect their quarterback. We go to Jacksonville at seven. Another team we can see trading now that Kyler Murray is probably going to go number one. But if they stick with that pick, um, they're all the all the signs point to them. Uh, getting Nick Foles in free mm -hmm. agency. So, and we go back to the same thing we said with Haskins. You got to protect them. At least for me, I see uh, the offensive tackle from Alabama, Jonah Williams, uh, going there. And uh, he could play tackle. He, he says he can play guard. He'd be open to playing, you know, either position, which he didn't in, in, in college. But, I mean, the Jags need some little help on the offensive line on the outside and the inside. So that's just – that's a perfect fit. In my uh, in my eyes, who do you have? And I think seven? they do go offensive line, but I think they take the offensive tackle from Florida, okay. Jawan Taylor, who's really moving up the draft right. boards. But definitely, they have to. Uh, That's another guy uh, with, uh, excuse me, a you know flip of a coin sure, kind of kind of thing there. Um, for and sure. they definitely have to protect the quarterback. Cam Robinson was uh, you know doing a good job, and Torres ACL is a devastating loss, and he might not you know start the year fully healthy. So definitely got to get another tackle to. Uh, protect what looks like it's gonna be Nick Foles yeah for sure and we move on to number eight at Detroit uh, a team that needs a lot uh, they've been in the rumblings of maybe moving Stafford not very big because of that big cap number it's gonna be hard for them to do that uh, if they somehow do do that even then maybe they be in the market for a quarterback but uh, I that's where I have Montez Sweat going is to Detroit uh, at number eight the edge rusher in Mississippi State that we talked about the fastest you know, time at the first defensive end, all that good stuff. And I, I know you got somebody different going to no, eight. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have him taking a defensive guy, but uh, Delvin White, the linebacker mm -hmm. from LSU, I know the guy Delvin you White. really like. Yes. Um, I think uh, Patricia, you know, Matt Patricia gets a linebacker to to build his defense around. You know, he's gonna want to mold into the Patriots' defense, get his kind of like Teddy Bruschi uh, kind of guy. And uh, Delvin White's tremendous. He's a three down linebacker. Uh, yes. Which you have to be nowadays. Quarterback in your defense. He can uh, play the run, play the pass, rush the quarterback. Uh, tremendous player, had a great combine. Yes. Uh, very solid pick here for the Detroit Lions. That would be a solid pick, and it would break my heart at 10 with Denver, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But we go move on to Buffalo, and uh, obviously they were in the talks for Antonio Brown, and that fell through. And uh, my one of my reasons that I didn't get to earlier because I saved it for now is why I think they cut the court on that is because I think they do draft DK Metcalf. Uh, wide receiver out of Ole Miss. Obviously, the look of the guy, he looks no, like, I mean, I like mean, a Greek god. he looks like a Greek god. He runs fast as the wind, obviously. The cone that we've looked at, the you know, the, the cone drills and the route running is yeah. definitely a question, but so is Randy Moss. Now, I'm not saying he's Randy Moss by any means yet, but I think that's something that he can get better with because of his speed. I think if he has the right coaching and the right uh, you know, guys leading him, or, or you know, I think I think DK Metcalf is a slam dunk for Buffalo, who needs need they need that wide maker. receiver, they need a playmaker, they need somebody. Josh Allen needs somebody sure. to throw to, sure. for sure. And Absolutely. At, at nine, I think you got. Uh, I'm gonna have them taking uh, Rashawn Gary, the DN from Michigan. Not not his biggest fan, but uh, definitely puts up the great combine numbers like we'd expect. Didn't really see the production at Michigan, but uh, the Bills do need some defensive line help. I have. Between him and uh, Ed Oliver, mm -hmm. uh, kind of Gary was here. a guy. Gary was a guy I had in top five in my yeah. first mock, and then he's just kind of, kind of going down a little I bit. I think people kind of realized the production wasn't there. It wasn't there. Less the than stellar. You know, yeah. So I mean, he was the number one uh, high school football player coming out of New Jersey. Everyone wanted him, mm -hmm. and he quite didn't live up to the expectations at Michigan. But uh, with a strong combine. I do think he'll definitely go top fifteen. If yeah, know, that's the, going top ten. Definitely, right now. definitely, and uh, I think we. Uh, we move on to my Denver Broncos, and we touched on a little bit just before. Is Devin White? That's who I still have them there. 
partly because I want them to take him, uh, but I, I think he will be there. I think some trades are going to happen before the Broncos to where the guys are getting needs that they need, maybe trading up for quarterbacks, trading up for uh, maybe DK Metcalf could be a trade-up possibility. Uh, you know, So I think, I think the Broncos will end up uh, landing Devin White. I think they will go linebacker. Um, and like you said, the quarterback of that he could be the quarterback defense. Vic, Vic Banjo needs a guy like that. Oh, yeah. We just, uh, you know, Brandon Marshall's gone. Uh, we need some fast, some speed at the linebacker position, and I think that's a slam dunk for the Broncos at, at ten. So I'm, I'm gonna have them taken again. I think this would be a trade here. I think you've heard rumblings to the Broncos possibly want to trade down. Mm -hmm. I, I do think a team maybe trades up here for another quarterback, Drew Locke from Missouri. I could see Cincinnati. I could see Miami or even Washington moving up here. So can even unfortunately have, see us drafting him. Or the Broncos yeah. take him. So I do have him going here, number 10 to Denver. Mm -hmm. Might not necessarily go to the Broncos, but I do think Drew Locke the spot. will go top 10, especially with Good. his uh, combine performance. Interesting. Uh, so we move on to 11 at the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Also kind of need similar needs as the Broncos. They need linebackers. They possibly need a quarterback. Uh, and we, we stick, in my, in my mock at least, we stick at the linebacker position with the Devin Bush out of Michigan. I mean, he's another guy I can see going top 10. Uh, Love that guy. He is a, if he was a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, exactly. he's a top 10 he's a pick. Little, a little small, but yeah. I mean. Oh, he's a tremendous player. He plays with a swagger. I'm a huge fan of him. All right. Can't talk more. So since he at, uh, at 11 for me, and uh, I'm not sure if you had the same or if you switched it up. We don't know. We didn't collaborate yeah. this, folks. We This is this is now. You're hearing it now. No, I did switch it up a little bit. I'm going to have them taking Jonah Williams, the offensive tackle from That's Alabama. Right. The Bengals have had a whole of tackle since uh, Andrew Whitworth went to the Rams. Mm -hmm. And it kind of compared Jonah Williams to Whitworth a little bit. Not a not an ultra-athletic uh, guy, but very fundamentally sound, good feet. Uh, great technique, comes from Alabama, pro-ready. So uh, I think that would be a good fit in Cincinnati. Definitely would be a good fit. Uh, you can definitely see them go and tackle there. Uh, and uh, we move on to uh, the Green Bay Packers, and that's where I have uh, Juwan Taylor of the Florida Gators going to, to the Packers, needing some help at the tackle position. They have some aging linemen uh, on, in Green Bay. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, he's the guy that gotta, you got to protect him. He's the, you know, he's the guy that's going to get them anywhere. So I definitely have Florida's uh, Juwan Taylor going there, like you said. I mean, great technique. Guy could be the be he's probably the best tackle in the draft between him and Jonah Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I have uh, that number twelve, Green Bay. Yep, I'm gonna have them taking Farrell, the defensive end from Clemson. Uh, very, very productive guy, productive player throughout his career at Clemson. Obviously, uh, great year this year in Clemson's national championship run. Mm -hmm. Had a great game in the BCS national championship. Great fit in their scheme. I think he's a good pick here at number twelve. Definitely good a good, definitely a good spot there. And then uh, number thirteen, we run uh, to the Miami Dolphins, who uh, are, look like they're moving on from Ryan Tannehill. They might be uh, in the market for a quarterback with Nick Foles, but it all all signs point to uh, Jacksonville getting him. And I can see them drafting a quarterback. This is where I have Drew Locke from Missouri going. Uh, I like we said before, could definitely see him trading, being a trade up candidate, going to ten at Denver, going to a different team, maybe even inside the top ten. Some mocks I've seen have Drew Locke going all the way to Oakland at four. I mean, that's that to me is a little bit of a stretch, but he's that kind of that wild card quarterback, sure. and somebody's got to go after Kyler Murray, and it looks like it's uh, it or excuse me, after Dwayne Haskins, Haskins and it's uh, it's got to be it's got to be Drew yeah. Locke there for me in Miami. Yeah, I'm gonna have him taking DK Metcalf. The Dolphins certainly need a playmaker. Uh, get Metcalf here at 13, I think would be really good value. Absolutely. Again, I'm not quite sold on him because of his route running. Uh, I think he might be a little bit too big, but it, he is a talented, uh, versatile playmaker. The Dolphins obviously lack that. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> for sure. I think that pick would make a ton of sense Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And then 14, moving on, we got the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, they've obviously had their struggles on defense. Uh, they, could, they could be in the market for pretty much any uh defensive position at this point uh but to me to solidify that defensive line to go with Vic Beasley to go with um Tack McKinley and Grady Jarrett who they just gave the franchise tag to it would definitely be Ed Oliver for yeah. me out of Houston I mean the guy oozes of talent uh you, you question with the linebackers yeah the I mean line. he's got the speed speed to be a linebacker he's got the size to be a defensive tackle just a guy that could I, I could definitely see Ed Oliver being a defensive player of the year kind of candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Atlanta, will he get, you know, Dan Quinn, a defensive guy, you know, he, I, he would probably be uh, just, you know, smitten at 14 with Ed Oliver. Absolutely. And I have them taking Ed Oliver, too. He's a perfect fit for that scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, all the things that you said, uh, top five talent, really, if he didn't, you know, have the injuries at Houston and right. the, the incident with the jack and stuff, <laughs> yeah. I think you may be talking to him. 
about him being a top five uh, Looks draft like, pick, but he's definitely a top five talent yeah. for Atlanta to get him at 14. Great, great. And, and that's value. a good spot because you look at the teams in the top five or even the top 10, he might, because of the off the field stuff, mm-hmm. that's too big of a risk to some GMs and mm-hmm. some coaches. Now, and you're at the 14th spot. It's like, I mean, he's worth the risk, in oh, my yeah. opinion, for anybody. I could, if he goes top five, neither of us would be surprised or think, "Wow, why would you do that?" You know, just because of the from the talent aspect of it. Um, so we move to Washington, round out our top 15 mock. Uh, Washington making the deal for Case Keenum. Uh, they're still hoping maybe there's a little chance Alex Smith comes back. I know both of us thought maybe they could go quarterback. I have them going Rashawn Gary out of Michigan. I think he's still going to be there at 15 because of just him dropping down and the production factor at Michigan. Uh, 15 would be you know, another big pick, uh, big spot to get um, Rashawn Gary for the Washington Redskins. Well, I haven't taken a Michigan guy as well, but I haven't taken Bush. Right. I think uh, and the, 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 you get him at 15 here. I, again, I think he's a top 10 player, top 10 yes. guy if, if he was a little bit taller, bigger. Get him here at 15. They need they need some uh, added speed and playmakers on their defense. Get him here at 15. I I, I think the tight end from Iowa, uh, Hawkinson, Hawkinson could, could yeah. be in play here too as well. Uh, as fan too, uh, yeah. Quarterback I mean, from Duke, uh, Daryl Jones. So Daniel Jones, yes. uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have them taking Bush here. And uh, those 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 Iowa tight ends are definitely creeping up everybody's mock, and they they're all over the Iowa place. Two ends. Iowa tight ends in the first, first round, round for sure, possibly the top, top 20. 20. Which is insane. And that's with George Kittle coming out of Iowa yep. a couple of years ago to and becoming the, a tight end factor. So apparently if you were playing if you're a high school kid and you're a good tight end, apparently you want to go to Iowa because you're gonna get drafted in the first round or, or at least drafted and and produ- and uh and offensive produce. linemen. We know and they breed well, offensive course. linemen. Yes, for sure. So we got our top fifteen mock point two point on done. We're gonna post those up for you. Um, that's gonna conclude our show today, guys. Uh, we definitely are excited for that live show coming up on Saturday. Or excuse me, I keep saying Saturday, Thursday, April twenty fifth. Uh, at, at Outback, 10.30 a.m. We'll make a formal post. We'll Absolutely. invite all our uh, people who subscribe to our page personally. Yes. yes. And again, we'll do the $50 gift card giveaway. We'll do the questions. So the $50, sorry, yes, I wanted to touch on the $50 gift card uh, giveaway is going to be, I think we've all, we're set on top 15. So you're going to give us your top 15 mock. Uh, starting April 1st, we want you guys to send them in to us. Uh, we'll, we'll keep them all and we'll, whoever gets the most top 15 picks right is going to win 50 bucks. Uh, if there's a tie, we'll split it up between you guys, okay? And uh, or we'll figure something out, maybe a little question, maybe a little trivia, something like that. But I think right now we're looking top 15. Uh, if you get the most right, $50 gift card to Outback. Uh, like we said, we got the live show coming up Thursday, April 25th. Finally said Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure you're liking the page. Like you said, again, Jared Nuzzy Podcast. We love this. Uh, yes. Yeah. And then we also appreciate all the feedback, uh, you, you know, even from some of the people that work kind of in the radio business yes, or the yes. TV, giving us good quality information on what maybe we should be doing. And definitely uh, it's noted and we're working on some things. For we're, sure. We're definitely um, uh, going to be adding some things as, as we progress and Absolutely. evolve the show. But uh, we definitely couldn't do it with if we were just getting, you know, 20 30 views and people weren't interested i think we probably would have mailed it in by now possibly but, i mean but but we love doing it but we just do. with all the support and the views and, and and everything we definitely think we do have something good going here absolutely and we appreciate it. we're gonna keep going strong and keep building it we're gonna and, keep uh, grinding for sure and uh once we get closer to football season like we've said we're gonna want to do more shows and uh you know two to three shows a yeah. week we'll have oh, some yeah. fantasy uh, fantasy football will be heating up. We'll have some rankings for that. We'll have some uh, people that'll help us out with that, with fantasy inputs, stuff like that. So, Absolutely. thank you guys again. Make sure, like we said, Jared Nuzzy Podcast on Facebook, Jared Nuzzy Podcast on YouTube. Click the subscribe button at Jared Nuzzy on Twitter. Guys, thank you so much. And of course, always, Asking All Prime. See ya.